hello everyone welcome back to our unit hydrograph introduction 2 so in introduction 1 we discussed what unit hydrograph is and we ended that video with the definition of unit hydrograph that I will show you again so what we are going to do in this video is discuss the assumptions that are made in the unit hydrograph theory and the actual theory behind it which is the theory of linear systems now some of these assumptions are already in the definition of unit hydrograph that you see here on the screen so the first assumption is that the excess rainfall is uniform throughout the entire watershed okay so excess rainfall is uniformly distributed over the entire watershed now <clears throat> I'm sure you many of you have experienced <laughs> rainfall I, I um, and then if you think about it rainfall is most of the times not uniformly distributed both in space and time so this how valid is this assumption that's something that you want to keep in mind at this point and then once we write all the assumptions i will come back to this okay the second assumption which is again e included in the definition which is the rainfall intensity is constant okay so excess rainfall intensity is constant for the entire duration again how valid is this assumption we'll come back to that okay so as i said earlier in most natural uh, systems will not have rainfall intensity that is uniformly distributed in both space and time okay so the third assumption is i'll write it down and i'll explain you what that means the base time the base time of direct runoff hydrograph or unit hydrograph for a given duration is constant so what what does that mean I'll just explain what that means so let's say we have a unit hydrograph here I'll just say Q and T and this is a one hour unit hydrograph and that's the base time for that TB1 okay now we get one hour unit hydrograph when you get one inch of rainfall for one hour okay now if you get two inch of rainfall in one hour what you do is you simply multiply this like this and this is your discharge hydrograph or direct runoff hydrograph for two inch okay so this is your unit hydrograph the first one I showed you I'll just highlight that in blue the second hydrograph that I created is not a unit hydrograph but I use the unit hydrograph to multiply it by two because we have a two 
2 inch rainfall excess so even though I multiplied it all I changed was the y axis okay the x axis did not change so the third assumption says that regardless of what the depth of the rainfall is the base time never changes for particular duration so if, if you are using one hour unit hydrograph you can multiply it all you do is you change the y-axis the x-axis never changes so that's the assumption that that is made here in point three okay and the fourth assumption is the direct runoff hydrograph or unit hydrograph does not change with antecedent antecedent moisture condition or antecedent precipitation what this says is that your runoff hydrograph that you get from that one inch of excess rainfall is always the same so for example let's say you get rainfall today and you get a one hour unit hydrograph for example from that one inch of rainfall and let's say the rainfall the same rainfall happens again tomorrow now if you think about it if the soil is wet it may behave differently next day but this fourth assumption says that no it, it will not behave any differently it will behave the same so these are I think four main assumptions that are made in the unit hydrograph theory and if you think about all these assumptions you will you will realize that many of these assumptions are not valid many or most of the times when we get rainfall but again this is a simple concept and we try to we try to use this when these assumptions are valid but as I said earlier many times these are not valid but we still continue to use this concept because it's a simple concept now if you think about these assumptions again as I said many times these are not valid so unit hydrograph is basically a theoretical concept because these assumptions are not valid many times we get rainfall and this theoretical concept is based on linear systems okay now what does linear systems mean and some of you may have studied this before so let's talk about what does a linear system mean so any system is called linear if it holds two properties so the first property is the property of additivity and the second property is property of proportionality now let's see what this means so let's talk about the first property the first property says that if you have a system and if you provide an input of A to that system or let's say A1 the output that you get let's say from A1 is B1 okay now if you provide an input of A2 the output that you get is B2 now if you provide input of a1 plus a2 
the output that you get is the output of what you got from A1 plus the output of what you got from A2 which in this case is B1 plus B2. So that's what the property of additivity is and again you may look at this yes I know this and this is not rocket science okay so that's a simple property so any system that is linear has this property of additivity the second property that it has is this property of proportionality so what property of proportionality means is so we said that a1 will produce b1 now to a1 if i multiply a constant let's say k what the property of proportionality says is your output also gets multiplied by that same constant k if you multiply a2 with also k your b2 also gets multiplied by k okay and if you multiply k to both a1 plus a2 the output that you will get is k b1 plus b2 so k a1 plus k a2 is k b1 plus b2 so we here we combine the property of both additivity and proportionality so any system that follows these two properties those systems are called linear systems and the unit hydrograph theory assumes that hydrologic systems are linear and again if you think about it many of the hydrologic natural natural hydrologic systems don't follow these properties and they are not linear okay but this system assumes that the hydrologic system is linear and that's how it has been used and we try to follow some um, assumptions here and try to 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 pick data that holds some of the the assumptions that are made in in, in the unit hydrograph theory so this is what linear system is then you may ask so, okay how do we use this in hydrology here i will just give you a simple example and then we will look at this in detail in the next video so how does this work so as i mentioned earlier unit hydrograph theory is based on one centimeter or one inch of rainfall so one inch So this is one inch of rainfall and this one inch of rainfall produces a direct runoff hydrograph and again to be specific one inch of excess rainfall will produce this direct runoff hydrograph and this is our unit hydrograph. Now instead of one inch what if we get two inch okay so if it is two inch i'll just add here so this is another one inch which means total we have two inch of rainfall so if you have two inch of rainfall all you do as i showed that to you earlier in while discussing the assumptions of unit hydrograph theory is you just multiply what you have for one inch by two and then you get result of two inch rainfall okay what if it is three inch if it is three inch you multiply this one inch unit hydrograph by three and you get three inch of rainfall so that is law of proportionality all we are doing is multiplying then let's see how we can use the law of additivity okay so what i have here is back black hydrograph resulting from one inch and this 
pink or purplish hydrograph resulting from two winds. Now, and what we have here is, let's say we get one inch of rainfall for the first one hour, and for the next one hour, you get two inch of rainfall. So this is one inch and this is two inch. So this is P, this is T. So instead of P, let's call this PE, that's rainfall axis. So this is one inch and this is two inch. So in this case, what we do is So we have one inch, so you get that unit hydrograph. And then after some time, you have this two unit of, or two inch of rainfall. So what you do is you delay your response by that time. And then you have this from two inch and this is for one inch and then you add these two so you add the black hydrograph with the pink hydrograph and so i'll just use this and that's your result oops now i don't know what color you get when you add pink and black i'll just use red here so this is q this is t so this is the final result for the event okay so here we used both the property of additivity and proportionality. So first we multiplied the unit hydrograph by two to get this pink hydrograph. And then we added the black hydrograph and the pink hydrograph to get this, to get the final result. So that's what linear, uh, that's how we can use the the properties of linear system to convert these two pulses of excess rainfall into this direction of hydrograph, okay? So this is it for this video. So in this video, we discussed some of the assumptions that are made in the unit hydrograph theory. And then we discussed what a linear system is and the two key properties of linear systems. And then we saw how those properties can be applied when you have a rainfall event. So in the next video, we will continue this discussion and we will come up with an equation that we can use to derive the direct run of hydrograph if we know precipitation and rainfall. And we will also discuss uh, a simple way of extracting or creating a unit hydrograph for a given watershed. So with that, I'll stop here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I hope you were able to follow what I discussed in this video. Okay, thank you and bye.